A little over a year ago, I did a video on uh, installing or updating your Edge TX DSM tools to uh, allow you to, to have full control over your uh, Spectrum smart receivers, uh, even the uh, new AS3X Plus. And that vi video continues to be popular and it is still valid. This video is a little bit overdue uh, because the uh, developer has uh, come out with what he calls a DSM tool suite. And what it does is it combines uh, several of the uh, scripts that used to be in separate ones into one to get all of your uh, DSM tools in one common script and uh, one interface. So it's, it's pretty cool. A uh, lot more streamlined interface and uh, uh, I think it works really well. It's the same uh, basic uh, scripts. They're just put in a menu format into a, a, a suite of tools. Uh, so first I want to demonstrate uh, what it looks like, give you a little show and tell and tour of the uh, of the script. I've got my TX16S here, uh, Mark II, and I've got it bound to an AR631 that also has a uh, AV and ESC plugged into it. So we've got all the telemetry values and, and things like that that we can uh, access. I am not going to get into a lot of detail on how to set up forward programming. That's not the point of this video. If I've got other videos on that, and there's a lot of them out there, but uh, you know, if I need a refresher on that, I certainly can do it. But I've got a lot of other videos showing you how to set up your models via forward programming. So that's not what this is about. I just want to show you how to access the tools so that you can get full advantage of your uh, HDX radio and uh, get full access. So if you've, any of you have been on the fence about uh, using a Radio Master or other uh, um, Edge TX based radio with your Spectrum receivers, you really don't have any reason to keep waiting. They've got full access to all the forward programming, the AV and ESCs you can program, all the telemetry information. Uh, you've got access to all of that with, uh, with the DSM tools. But, uh, so push your Sys menu button and the first thing you're going to see is all your tools and, and uh, scripts. Previously, you would have to do your Smart RX with all your uh, Avian programming with one script, and you did your DSM forward programming with another script. Now we've got what's called DSM Tools. Uh, 2.1 is the current version as of the time of this video. If you tap that, then it loads you into this other interface where you can do your model setup. Uh, and the forward programming, your telemetry, which includes like your AV and ESC, and I'll go into these. Uh, captured data is more of uh, for the developers and uh, beta testers. I use that, you know, when I'm relaying information as if I do some testing. If I need to cap, if we need to capture some new information, uh, we can use that. And it'll it'll capture that telemetry information that's being transmitted from the receiver. So when you're in here, the first thing you're gonna uh, need to do once you get this new install is uh, the plane setup, and that's where you establish your uh, your wing type, tail type, and that sort of thing. Figure out what channels you're using for the different control surfaces, and if you need to reverse any channels, you can do that from here. And this is the same as the previous uh, script. So you back out of that, and then you have access to your forward programming. Once you're in there, this is going to look the same as it would with pretty much any Spectrum Radio or any other uh, of the uh, more recent versions of the uh, forward programming scripts. But you've got your gyro settings. These menus are going to be all the same. Now this one happens to be updated to the AS3X Plus. Uh, this one's got version 3.1.3 on that receiver. I think there's a newer one. Uh, but it is AS3X Plus. So you can go into your gyro settings. This is this is all the same as you would have with your with your Spectrum radio. Uh, AS3X settings, you know, priority heading, stop lock. So you can see this has all the new options for the AS3X Plus. Like I said, you've got full access to all the uh, features with that. Utilities, hand launch mode, it's all there. Uh, if you do happen, just FYI, if you do happen to find anything that you don't uh, have access to, or for some reason you can't get to it. Uh, the developer is very responsive. You can either post it on the GitHub for this, which I'll have links below uh, on where you get these files, uh, or put them in the comment of these videos. You know, he does watch these videos. I'm very active uh, working with the developer, so we, uh, if there's an issue, I'll follow up with him and we'll see if we can get it figured out and add it if there is, a, in fact, a bug. Most of the time it's user error, but if not, you know, we'll uh, figure it out. And uh, Frankie's very responsive and uh, 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 very active development with this script. So. Uh, we'll back out of that and then uh, go back into the DSM tools. So you've got your telemetry in here. You can look at your flight log. This is going to give you like your fades and holds for all that uh, stuff. Your uh, receiver BEC batter, uh, battery voltage. Text gen. This is the uh, for the AV and ESC setup. 
and uh, as you can see I've got it did populate so that means I do have it connected to an Avian ESC if you don't have it hooked up to an Avian ESC you're not going to see anything in this screen um, and I can't access it right now because you have to do it within the first uh, 30 or 40 seconds after powering up the receiver but uh, you do have access to configure these uh, uh, Avian ESCs turn activate reverse thrust and all that stuff I've got other videos on that uh, you can take a look at your uh, AS3X gains and everything from this screen. If I switch between the different flight modes, uh, you can see that uh, updating. Now, in my in this particular receiver in safe mode, it doesn't have AS3X activated because it's a it's got safe. So if I switch out of that and I go to the safe limits, then I can see the safe gains, angle limits, and I can tell what flight modes I'm in up here. Uh, ESC status. Uh, since I do have uh, an Avian ESC hooked up to this, I do have a lot of data. Uh, right now it's not running, it's not even hooked up to a motor, but so you won't see amps or any of that other stuff. You can also get the smart battery information if you are using the Spectrum smart batteries. So you can see I've got per cell voltage over here, I've got current amps. So this is the uh, smart uh, information if your ESC has that center data wire for your smart battery. You can get information off your uh, Sky ID. I've done other videos on that. So there's a whole lot of information here on the telemetry screen that you can access. Various GPS stuff. And like I said, capture data is just, it's, it's not really refined because it's more of a developer thing, but uh, you have the ability to capture a lot of information from that uh, if necessary. Pretty nice. And this is also available for the black and white radios. Let me show you my Zorro with the same, uh, I think I've only got 2.0 on that one, but let me show you what it looks like on that radio. Uh, this is my uh, Radio Master Zorro, and I have uh, the DSM Tools Suite version 2.0, and it is a specific one for the black and white radio, so don't try to put the color one on your black and white radios, and we'll get into that when we get on the GitHub page here in a minute. Uh, but uh, same thing, push the Assist button to get into the menus. And as you can see, I've still got the old version 5.8 on there, and, it, and it, uh, it does say minimum. That's what the old one was because it was a kind of a minimalistic version because the black and white radios don't have the, uh, the memory and the CPU power that the uh, color radios have. And you had a separate app for the setup, separate app for the forward programming, and then you had a separate app for the uh, telemetry. So you had three different apps or Lua scripts that you had to use to get to this. Now you can see, if I scroll down to DSM Tools Suite, and I click on that, I have all three script access from right here. So I can go to the airplane setup, forward programming, and then the uh, telemetry. That's your AVN ESC, because I still have access to control all that as well. If I go into that, I got still got that same flight log, the text generator, AS3X and safe settings, ESC status. But I just wanted to show you that you have access to all the same menus and all the same uh, Lua scripts with the black and white radios. Now, like I said, this video is not a total tutorial for this, but as long as we're talking about it, I wanted to cover a couple of the common mistakes people make when they're trying to get DSM tools to work with their uh, between their HTX radio and the uh, Spectrum receivers. You go into your RF setup. You need to make sure that you use DSM. X2F is the most common, but you have to use one of the DXM uh, DSM X protocols. You can't use DSM2. That will not work. Also, the enable max throw. That needs to be not checked. If you check that, it's going to break the connection with the uh, the safe modes. I may make a video in the future about why that does that and how to actually take advantage of that. But uh, for probably 90% of the people, 95% of the people, you do not want to turn that on because it's just going to cause you problems. And uh, you also want to make sure that you enable sufficient channels. Channels 1 through 12 gives you full range to all the physical and virtual channels on these smart receivers. Um, but if you have this set, you know, sometimes it'll default to channels 1 to 6 because that's how many physical channels, like for example, this AR631 has. But if you do that, any of the virtual channels above channel 6, because you have, you can do all the way up to channels 5 through 9 for your safe mode channels or reverse thrust, any of that. And it uses a couple of additional channels for telemetry information. So I, I just, uh, by rule of thumb, set these all the time to channels 1 to 12. And then I've got access to all the, uh, all the physical and virtual channels. And you won't have any uh, issues with that. Uh, make sure, uh, not specifically related to forward programming, but it's always a good practice to set a unique uh, ID number or receiver number for that receiver. You also want to make sure that once you bind up to the... Uh, 
receiver and you have all your hardware plugged in if you have an AV and ESC make sure that's plugged in and you need to go over to your uh, telemetry and make sure that you have discovered new if you had for stuff previously populated in there and you uh, rebound to that receiver or change receivers for that particular model you're gonna want to del delete them and then capture new again to make sure that you have all fresh uh, accurate telemetry addresses uh, if you have widgets or uh, logical switches or anything set up using the previous telemetry values, you may have to go through and change those because now they're not going to be linked to the correct addresses anymore. So that's something to think about. And uh, also for Spectrum, almost always, you're going to want to disable these telemetry alarms by turning that checkbox on. Otherwise, you're going to get nuisance alarms because the, the flyby telemetry of most of the uh, basic smart uh, Spectrum receivers is lower range and you're going to get nuisance alarms if you leave that uh, telemetry alarms active so just turn that off it's all right sorry to drag on that but i just want to make sure i cover that those are common questions we get all the time and you want to make sure you cover that uh, let's jump into the software and let me show you where to get these uh, scripts and how to put them on your radio all right so as is always the case when you're making any changes to your your radio um, yeah, if you're going to be changing contents of the SD card, it's up to you, but rule of thumb and best practice is to always back up your SD card. Uh, let's get us uh, connected in with the computer. I've got a USB cable. This is USB-C, always to the top port. You're going to get this dialog where you can select joystick, USB storage, or serial. For our application, we want to get to the SD card, so we're going to go to USB storage, SD. Now that we're connected into the computer, you're going to get the USB logo on the screen. Now we can set that aside and get on the computer and uh, show you how to get to your files. All right, now that we've got the, uh, the radio plugged into the computer, uh, we're going to get a pop-up here that uh, says USB drive. Now the letter may change on your uh, computer. Mine happens to be E drive. Give it a second. Sometimes it takes a minute before it uh, connects and uh, lets you access it. But if I click on that drive, now I can see the actual contents of my SD card. And uh, first thing I want to do uh, again, this is up to you, but uh, good practice is to back this up. And to back this up, it's simple. All you got to do is click the first one, hold my shift button down, click the bottom file, and uh, either you know drag that or just right click and then hit copy. And then find a place for you to uh, put it. Make a new folder here. Folder, this is going to be my uh, DSM tools. Video, let's just call it that. All right, we'll go in there. Let's uh, paste that. Depending on how much stuff you have on your SD card, this will uh, take a couple of minutes. We'll speed up through this. We're going to be working with a couple of different things here, uh, just like the old one. And then this doesn't need to be modified per se if you've got an old one on here, but you have to create this. So in your models folder, first thing, you must have a DSM data folder. Uh, you're not going to populate with any, anything in there. It's going to automatically populate as you do the, the plane setup within the uh, DSM tools scripts. Um, I have stuff in there because these are all the different models that I've worked with with forward programming. Uh, but if this is a new installation for you, just go into your models folder and uh, you can right click and just make a new folder, DSM data, uppercase. You don't have to do that. This is going to be within the uh, package when you download the, the, uh, the, the DSM tool script. I just wanted to show you where that will be. Make sure that exists. It can be empty. Just make sure that's there. And then the other uh, files and folders are going to be within the scripts and tools. Now I still got old ones on here from my 58, and that's this uh, DSM lib. So this one, this and this, uh, and then the capture, that. So all these folders, this folder and all these files are related to the old version. So just for this demonstration, I'm just going to go ahead and delete these just to, to keep it clean. We don't need any of that. Now, if you're going to update, so let's say, for example, this was 2.0 or something, you're going to want to delete these two. These are for the DSM Tools Suite, and this folder is for the DSM Tools Suite. 
and that's going to have a bunch of other stuff in it. This stuff will all come in your package when we download it in a, here in a minute. So if I'm going to update this script from an old one, I'm going to delete that folder and everything in it, and then I'm going to delete these two if I'm updating. So for this video, I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete these. If I hold the control button down, I click that one, and then these two I can select individual folders. So I'm going to delete these for now and delete. Okay, so we're essentially starting from square one, if, uh, assuming I didn't have any DSM tools on my radio. Uh, let's switch over to the uh, internet. We'll pull up the uh, GitHub. This is the uh, github.com slash, I'll, I'll put a link to this below, frankierzu slash DSM tools. Okay, so what we're concerned with in this one is the DSM tools suite. With, if you grab that, you're going to have everything you need. You don't need the forward programming. You don't need the telemetry. This is all in the suite. So let's go into the suite. And you need to pick which type of radio. Uh, he has been working on this for the Ethos radios. We're going to go into the HTX version. And uh, version 2.1 color is the one we want for the uh, TX16S. If we're going to put it on the Zorro or the Boxer, we're going to put it, uh, we're going to get this black and white. That's the BW version. So we're going to grab that one. So if you click on either of these files, let's just click on the uh, 2.1 color. Just tap on that. And then you come over here. There's a little drop down arrow. It says download raw file. If I click on that. <clears throat> so once I click on that uh, little download arrow over there, you can see it pops up the dialog and lets me save it where I want. DSM tools video and I get a folder where you can find it hit save now I've got my downloads up here if you're on a different browser this is going to be different of course I'm going to pull up the folder where that file exists I'm going to right click on that I want to extract all and for me I'm going to get rid of this extra extension I can just put those files in the same folder hit extract now you can see it's automatically created the two folders that we need. So in, uh, like I was talking about the DSM tools, if you go to the models slash DSM data, you can see there's nothing in there. It's just making the folder for you. And then in our scripts, tools, we have the DSM tools Lua. This is the suite and the uh, folder that has all the files in it. So all you got to do, grab these two things. I'm going to right click and click copy. Now I'm going to come over here to my radio and uh, right click and hit paste. And you can see it, uh, it modified these two folders and put them there. So now this one shouldn't be changed because I already had DSM data there. So that remains unchanged. But if we go into the scripts folder now, look at tools. You can see now I have that folder again and I just have the DSM tools script. I don't have the uh, Lua C. That is a uh, initialization file that's created when you first open that up. So that's all you got to do. Now those files are on your radio and uh, should be good to go. So as you can see it's uh, it's pretty simple to get the latest and greatest uh, DSM tools. Uh, there's been a lot of work done on that. Frankie's awesome. He's very responsive and uh, also if you ever have any issues with uh, with the accessing it uh, I get on here frequently and I keep an eye on this uh, up here in the top corner here if you see there's an issues if you click on that come in here if you have any issues this one's from a long time ago I'm not sure why this one's not closed out but uh, if you have an issue you can click new issue you can add details of the problem try to be as detailed as possible of what you've tried your status of your system the version of HTX you have uh, version of the DSM tools you have, uh, you know, be as detailed as possible on the problem and uh, most likely a solution has already been determined or maybe it's user error, but uh, you know, between myself, Frankie and uh, several other people that frequent the uh, this GitHub page, we can probably help you get it uh, sorted out if you have an issue. Any questions, put them in the comments below, see if we can help you get started. Uh, and uh, it has really been refined such that you can do pretty much anything you need with your uh, HDX radio with your uh, Spectrum uh, receivers. So, thanks for watching. Take care.